Hey, what's up? So before I get started with this week's video, I do want to let you know that I am running a print shop of my photos or at least some of my photos. I'll leave the link in the description of this video and I'll leave like the backstory or the sole purpose of like me selling prints in the first place in the highlights in my Instagram. My Instagram will also be linked down in the description. So yeah, if you're interested, uh, consider buying a print, consider buying two or consider giving the website a look. Um, I don't care if you don't buy one. I do care if you do buy one, let me know, um, show it to me. But with that out of the way, let me turn on my scanner. So yeah, if you watched my last video, uh, I mentioned that I wanted to go over how I scan my film, not how I edit my film, but how I scan it. For what purpose? I'm not sure. I say that because there's plenty of videos that could probably teach you a little more, but maybe you don't completely hate me or you're just curious as to how I, as a person, scan my film. I do have some mannerisms that probably aren't super efficient or correct at that, but I don't know. That's the purpose of the video, to show you how I scan my film. I don't care if it's the right way to do it, but it's the way that I've been doing it and no one's gonna tell me otherwise. Yeah, let me start recording my screen and open Epson Scan 2. So yeah, for the record, or just for some sort of clarification as to what I'm using and what I'm running, I'm using an Epson V600. Uh, I did upgrade from an Epson V500, so I myself can tell you that the 500 to 600 jump wasn't that big of a difference for some awkward reason. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting like something better, I guess. The Epson V600 is a little faster, but by a negligible difference. It's not like anything super wow. Of course, scan quality is pretty much identical. Uh, both scanners can yank out the same amount of information from a photo, but that wasn't a surprise for me though. I guess I was just expecting a little more, but whatever, besides the point, Epson V600, it is better than the V500. It's newer, obviously. With that being said, I am selling my V500, so you know, let me know on Instagram if you wanna consider buying it. So yeah, the first thing you might have noticed is that I don't actually mount my film on the film holders. I kind of just smack it on the glass, but I clean it beforehand, obviously. Someone might tell you that this reduces the amount of clarity that comes on the actual negative, but I haven't noticed much of a difference. And I say that because I've used the film holders and just the straight up film sheets. What are they called? So yeah, there's the first thing that I do differently, or at least I think I do differently. As far as settings go, um, for document source, of course, transparency unit, because we are scanning film document type since I do use negative lab pro in Lightroom to convert my negatives I do run a color positive film scan and not a color negative even though we are clearly you know scanning color negative film you also have the black and white option but this isn't black and white so for my purposes I do use color positive film image type I stick with 48 bit color just because I can Image resolution, this is also a very dicey topic. Someone might tell you that you don't need to scan to 3200, but I do because I can. For a really long time, I did not go over 2400 strictly because my computer couldn't handle scans over 3200. Ever since then, I have upgraded computers, thankfully, and I now do 3200 DPI scans. I set scanning quality to high just because I can. Uh, color management, I obviously turn it all off. I don't want my negative to be color edited in any way because I do that myself in Lightroom. So yeah, none. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, thumbnail options, this doesn't matter. Oh yeah, here's the biggest thing. Uh, I scan my film as JPEGs, not as TIFFs as someone might tell you to do. Uh, if you're watching this video and you know more about the technicalities of scanning film, please let me know as to why I should be using TIFFs and not JPEGs. I have a general understanding as to why but I haven't found a concrete reason to switch from JPEGs. I don't know, JPEGs are smaller files, obviously, I know. I understand that it's better to have a bigger file, but for my purposes, since I'm not printing prints the size of my house, um, I think it's okay to stick with this. So yeah, that's that. And yeah, just like any other film scanning tutorial video, uh, yeah, you select your film and you scan. And yeah, uh, after, I don't know, like a minute or two. Yeah, it was like two minutes. Yeah, two minutes, uh, yeah, you have your negative. This is my negative. Ew, why did the color change? Uh, yeah, let me open up Lightroom. I also completely forgot to open that up. This will also take another five years because, you know, Lightroom takes an eternity to open. <laughs> At least for me, I think this is pretty normal, but I always complain about it. 
Yeah, as far as I have my film um, categorized on a hard drive, it's a little confusing and it's probably not a very efficient way to do any of this, but this is just the way I have my stuff set up. It works for me. I'm the only one that touches my film, scans my film, and or edits my film. So yeah, let me import this. So yeah, you know, once this is uploaded, I go to develop. And the first thing I like doing is adjusting the god awful crop because it hurts my eyes. And yeah, then as per the instructions for Negative Light Pro, I white balance to the film border. Doesn't matter if it's 35, uh, 120, or 4x5. You know what I mean. Yeah, and again, as per the instructions for Negative Light Pro, you have to crop beyond the film border because you don't want to include the film border in the conversion process of the coloring, if that made sense. But yeah, just crop in. I crop all the way inside because I tend to have these splotches around like the very edge of the border and sometimes it causes these weird color casts on the photo. So yeah, hot tip of the day that I haven't seen many people do, at least on video, is to crop way beyond the actual film border. And yeah, you have two options to pull up Negative Live Pro, you can go to plugin extras and hit Negative Live Pro, or you can use this hotkey, which is control N, which is what I do, it's faster. And again, for a little more settings, uh, I lie to Negative Live Pro and I tell them that I'm using tip scans. It's not a tip scan, but I put tip scan. Color model, I use Frontier. You have all of these, you know, do what you will. Pre-saturation, I'm really bad at making choices, so I leave it at default. Border buffer, um, I did some reading on this. I still don't know what it means. I set it at zero. Take that as you will. And yeah, click uh, convert negatives or negative in this case. It doesn't take long at all. Oh my goodness, this thing looks horrible. That is most definitely my fault. It's not <laughs> the software's fault. This is entirely my fault. Oh man, this photo sucks. Actually, no, it doesn't suck. It's just very blue and there's a light leak for some reason. We're off to a pretty bad start. I'm sorry. Let me just adjust this a little more. Oh, I just remembered why there's a light leak on this photo. This roll is actually um, exposed because I opened the film back because I'm a little stupid sometimes and I forget that I have rolls in the camera. I had a roll of film in there. Fuck. So yeah, that's why I have this light leak here. Um, I opened the camera and I thought these photos would save themselves, but I guess this one didn't completely make it through. So yeah, let me open up um, Negative Live Pro again, just for like some recommendations, again, for the settings. Uh, I tend to stick with Cinematic Rich or Cinematic Log, just because that's what I like. That's what I like using. Uh, you also have Lab Standard. This is what, you know, the film would normally look like. I hate it. So I go to cinematic because it looks a little better in my opinion. I used to use a uh, linear flat, you know, it's also kind of like cinematic rich or flat, but you know, I'll use log for this photo for maybe apparent reasons. For these sliders, I don't really have like a recipe per se in terms of getting the negative to look the way I want it to look. But the biggest piece of advice that I could give you, at least from my perspective, is that this initial conversion process of the negative is to have like a very clean flat image so you can then do a second edit on. So yeah, I do edit my film, but this is not me editing my film. This is me trying to get the cleanest, clearest, most clinical photo ever. So yeah, let me run through this. Okay, for these, I leave these alone. I don't know what they are and I honestly don't care. Color, this is the most important thing. Uh, you can click none and this is kind of what, you know, Negative Live Pro tells you what the film looks like. You choose neutral. You have warm, which is probably gonna look the best in my opinion. Uh, you also have cool if you wanna make it look cooler. Um, as for me, I tend to stick with auto warm and Kodak simply because that's what gives me the colors that I saw when I was taking the photo. So for me, in this case, I will be choosing, hold on. I'll be choosing Kodak simply because this is what the colors look like uh, in my eyes, but these colors are by no means extremely accurate. Again, you have to consider that this is film and film isn't ever going to be 
the most precise thing in the world. There's this little magenta hue that I don't like. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll do one, and then like in the shadows, I'll do like another. Now you see, then it's turning green. I'll also do negative one. I'll leave it at that. This looks pretty decent. I also did completely botch up the exposure, so it's partially my fault. And yeah, the last thing that I can tell you to recommend anything uh, is the sharpening. Uh, it'll normally stick to leave as set, but I like using Sharpen Lab because it makes the image look a little better. It makes the photo look somewhat bearable to look at, especially on 35 millimeter because you know it's a smaller negative, you have less resolution than medium format. So yeah, uh, I really do recommend Sharpen Lab because it completely um, skyrockets the amount of sharpening that you're putting on the photo. It's good, in my opinion, if you focus properly, I think. You can let me know otherwise. I think this is a decently sharp image. This is also slightly out of focus. So this information is most definitely better in other hands. But yeah, that's quite literally how I scan my film. I don't do much more than this um, beyond the initial edit. So yeah, again, um, take this as you will. This is very general information. Maybe you might have heard this or seen this in other videos or other forums, but I thought it'd be a decent idea to regurgitate this information to you, the viewer, whoever you want on the other side of the screen. So if you don't mind, I will be powering through a second exposure of this exact photo, meaning I'll rescan and I'll re-edit just so you can get a second understanding as to how I do this without me talking. And yeah, there you go. It's another photo. It really doesn't take long. I'm a little lazy in terms of, wait a minute, this is actually pretty in focus. I am decently proud of myself. Besides that, uh, yeah, this is how I scan my film. Hopefully I was able to teach you something. Maybe I was able to unbore you this morning, this afternoon, this night, whenever it is that you're watching this video. Again, I understand that I'm by no means the most technical person. I am by no means the most well-versed person in terms of photography, in terms of film photography at that. So uh, I wanna thank you, whoever you are, for watching this video, for taking the time out of your day to listen to me and what I had to say on this topic. If you have any suggestions in terms of making my process a little more efficient, a little easier, or just a little more fun, please let me know in the comments or shoot me a DM, you know, on Instagram. I really do wanna re-clarify that I am by no means a photographer. I am not a photographer, and I will never say that I know what I'm doing when it comes to film. So yeah, with that being said, uh, consider liking the video if you liked the video. Consider subscribing if you don't completely hate me and you, well, you know, enjoyed this video or the other videos that I've uploaded in the past. Consider sharing this with your mom. Consider following me on Instagram. My at is right here and here. Wait, I did that backwards. Here and here. And as always, it will be in the description. Just for another shameful plug, I am running that print shop that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So the link to that will also be in the description. Consider buying your prints. If you do buy one, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, shoot me a DM and show it to me once you get it. If you have any questions, any sort of concerns, uh, any sort of death threats, consider plugging those in wherever you feel like it's more appropriate. And yeah. I'll see you next week. Uh, I think I know exactly what video I'm gonna be making. I haven't gone out to shoot the photos, but I am halfway there. So yeah, see you next week. See you whenever I upload the video. And yeah, that's it, bye.